Hey everyone, Elite here, and I have hopefully a very enjoyable video for you today. So I recently got this cute small travel core set or half pan set. If you want to see a review, then leave me a comment below and I'll be happy to do one for you. But I thought this would be a really great opportunity to show you how I like to use my core paints. Now the thing with Core is that they have this different binder to their paints. It's called Aquazol and it's kind of cool <laughs> to see how they behave with other colors. So here I'm taking the magenta color in the Core set and just putting it on some watercolor paper. Can we all appreciate my... <laughs> <laughs> my videography skills. <laughs> and then I'm adding some, uh, I think this is Nickel Azo Yellow, which is an excellent color to put in this small set. And you saw how they behave. Now I'm taking another brand's uh, pink. This is Bright Rose by Holbein. And again, taking some of the Azo Gold, Azo Yellow. And there's the magic. So this is really the cool thing about Core, that they will push away pretty much most other watercolors. Now, don't be too strict with me here because I haven't tested all the colors in the world, but from all the paints that I have, and I have many brands, it is, I can pretty much give you a blanket statement that this will work with most paints. Now, I also want to say that certain pigments or formulations have this ability. For example, I have always in my palette the Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow. One of the reasons that I love it as uh, a regular in my palette is because it is pushing other colors. So you can find the same quality in other brands as well, but with Core, it's pretty much, you, you can kind of rely on that effect. So let's all enjoy this beautiful moment. <laughs> this is Rembrandt's Ultramarine Blue, French Ultramarine actually, which is just a gorgeous uh, Ultramarine. And I added some transparent oxide brown from the core palette. And it's just magic. So, of course, this effect, it's not something you can really, really control. And the paint will just continue to spread. But that's kind of the fun thing about watercolors, isn't it? That you don't know what's going to happen. So, oh, <laughs> isn't that beautiful? My four-year-old was watching me as I was filming this and she was like, wow, wow, wow. It was <laughs> really, really lovely to uh, see her reaction. So that crazy purple color is Brilliant Red Violet by Schminke. It's one of those colors that I think is kind of hard to find from other brands. I haven't really seen something like this. Super, super intense, of course, fluorescent and uh, fugitive color, but it's watercolor magic. So here we can see the orange, the red, the yellow are all core. Isn't that beautiful? So I'm showing you here just some color play, but the next part of the video that's coming soon, I'll show you some actual examples of how I think this would be a fun um, effect to take advantage of. And here I'm applying, this is Dusk Pink from Rembrandt, and now I'm adding some of the Ultramarine Blue from the Core set. And again, you can see, I mean, you can just sit there and watch this, and it's mesmerizing and beautiful to watch. This is why I love watercolors, because, I mean, you can play around with other mediums. I think like fluid acrylics, for example, it's fun to play with or anything that is more liquid is really interesting. But yeah, something about watercolors. 
Now I'm just adding some splatters into this brilliant red violet and now into this. So you can see again that certain colors are really, really aggressive. It depends, besides the formula of the paint itself, it also depends on the amount of water that you have. So let's look at some more concrete examples that I thought of that would be really fun to play with. One thing that you can do is, for example, use this for petals, for florals. A lot of flowers have a different color in the center and with the core paints you can get that effect very easily. Now again, you have to kind of know what's happening and you know be prepared <laughs> for some intense color spreading but I think with a little bit of practice you can learn how to get a result that you want. So again the palette on the right has other brands and then the one on the left is the core one and I just added my favorite pink again <laughs> that's Holbein Bright Rose and then dabbed a little bit of the core yellow into it. And now I'm just showing you how you can do this also with uh, foliage, with some leaves. You can just get really, really fun effects. And I really think that's the best thing about adding core paints to your collection. The fact that if you just paint with core, you're not going to be able to take full advantage of this. So I think they just work best if this is an effect that you're interested in, which I am. Uh, it works best if you combine brands. And now I want to show you the Daniel Smith Nickel Azo Yellow. Again, it's a pushy color. I use it all the time uh, for that reason many times, but it's not as intense as the core thing. Now another thing that I thought would be fun would be something like a night sky or painting, you know, galaxies are very popular, or were kind of on trend <laughs> a couple of years ago. And um, did I say Aurora Borealis? I meant the, you know, the northern lights. It's really fun to do that because you can go in with your dark colors from another brand and, you know, leave probably maybe a little bit more white space than I did. But then you can go in with the core paints and you can be sure that they will be the one pushing away the dark colors and kind of making way for the paint that you're adding and for the light and not having that dark color kind of close in. So it's just, it's just so much fun. <laughs> and yeah, I think also if you paint like uh, a night scene or something like that, this makes adding light easier because you can kind of trust that it's going to work and it's going to push away the dark color. So can we all appreciate just how pretty <laughs> that magenta is? So yeah, so here I probably should have stopped. I just wanted to show you more and more colors and added more and more. And also when you add them, the core paint in the core paint, it doesn't have that same, you know, whoosh effect, but it's still fun. They have a very high uh, dispersity. Is that the word? And you can just play and play and play. So I think I kind of, <laughs> I'm done with that thing. But here I, again, I want to show you the, the core paint itself. So this is the core magenta. And when you add the yellow, it's just not as intense as with another brand's uh, pink. Let's move on to another example, which I think also demonstrates how useful this can be. I'm just putting down some greens for a tree, a very abstract tree from my imagination. And using the core paints is a really fun and easy way of adding highlights and also shade in an effective 
way I feel. So you just drop that in and instantly you have the light going into your tree. And if I take now a sword brush and I mix a dark color, then I can add some branches. And I know that the darkness from my branches will spread into the green of the tree and not the other way around, which in this case is the effect that I want. And this is just, <laughs> this is for me, like making this video is just so much fun because you can get lost in the process. You know, it's when you go in the zone, that flow mode, and you're just mesmerized <laughs> by the colors. Now, as with watercolor, everything dries lighter and the effect is not as dramatic as it looks here and the color continues to spread. I think maybe a good idea if you kind of wanted to freeze <laughs> the situation would be maybe to just uh, hit it with some heat gun, heat and not and kind of stop all that spreading. But you can, of course, just go again with another layer. And isn't that lovely? <laughs> I had so much fun playing with them. <laughs> um, yeah, I actually, I would love to do a dedicated video to this small set. It's interesting. It has also a unique palette. That is one of the things that I really enjoy about Core. I like that they are a little bit different. You know, they're... They have these introductory set in these really fun metal tins that are not the most usable, but you know, it's like something new. It's something exciting. And also the way that the, their paint behaves with other watercolors make them exciting. Sadly, in Europe, it's probably the most expensive watercolor paint that I can find. And for some reason, their large tubes are only 11 milliliters when I can get uh, German brands like Lucas and Rembrandt, they make 20 or 25 milliliter tubes. So I really try and save my core paints to use for these kind of effects and not as my, you know, workhorses, but they are lovely. And if you're in the US, then you can probably find them for a more reasonable price. Another thing I think uh, they would be another way that would be fun to use them is for skies. It's just nice that when you add colors, you know that you're not going to get a lot of mud. You're just going to get one color pushing the other. Now, of course, this just depends on what you want to do. But I think in many situations, it can make your life easier. And you don't have to worry about getting muddy colors. So here you see, for example, how the yellow color is also pushing the pink core color, but mostly they push <laughs> the other brands around. Core created, Golden created a very pushy color. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a great day. Bye.